So earlier in this chapter, we talked about something called beam depletion, and we recognize that as the Earth, um, sorry, as the Sun sends radiation in all directions, including towards the Earth, um, not all of that radiation or energy is going to get to the Earth because of the Earth's atmosphere, and that's kind of what this is talking about. The fact that um, the Earth's atmosphere will have an impact on the radiation. Basically, some forms of radiation we're going to see will not make it to the Earth's surface. And what happens to the radiation um, the radiation when it hits the Earth's atmosphere on the way perhaps to the Earth depends upon the wavelength of the energy. Remember that the Sun is sending all forms of electromagnetic radiation including gamma rays, x-rays, um, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, radio, sorry, and microwave. All those different types of energies are coming from the Sun and, and what happens in the Earth's atmosphere depends upon the wavelength and it also depends upon the particle that that's interacting with that particular energy. So those two things, and we'll be talking more about that. But in general, we could say that the radiation or energy coming from the sun, that that radiation would be absorbed by the particular particle it interacts with. Okay, The radiation can basically pass through or pass by that particle. Okay, That's called, the, we would say that the energy is transmitted. Um, that particular wavelength relative to that particular component of the atmosphere is just transmitted. And then the last thing is that that particle can interact with that particular form of, of incoming radiation and it will either, it will read what we say redirect that energy. And a type of redirection would be like scattering or reflecting. Okay. Um, so here's kind of a quick look at uh, if we say um, and we use the term insulation. If we consider the amount of insulation, 100% of the, the energy coming from the sun, how does it interact with the Earth's atmosphere? And this is just, just kind of a quick look at, the, I guess, the, the energy balance. About 30% of the, this is just in general, and it depends from day to day, that sort of thing, but perhaps one scenario would be that 30% of the energy coming from the sun is scattered back. That's to say, goes back into outer space. Um, and we could break down that 30% perhaps this way. We could say that 5% basically of the of the total Earth's, excuse me, of the total radiation coming from the sun, 5% bounces off of the top of the Earth's atmosphere. 20% um, then um, can actually be reflected uh, redirected, that's a type of redirection reflected um, by the Earth's atmosphere itself and clouds within the Earth's atmosphere. So that leaves another 5% that's scattered back into outer space. And so another 5% can be basically lost to outer space after the um, energy from the sun hits the Earth's surface and 5% is just reflected back into outer space. So 30% lost outer space. What about the other 70%? Well, about 20% of that remaining energy from the sun in general can actually be then absorbed by those cloud particles. Um, by the way, I'm hoping, and we'll be talking more about this, but I hope you know that whenever you see milky white cloud, I want you to think in H2, I'll put an L there for H2 liquid. Okay. Um, so clouds can absorb absorb now a certain amount of solar radiation. And then actually just the atmosphere itself, clouds in the atmosphere maybe add up to about 20% of that um, incoming energy from the sun is trapped in the Earth's atmosphere. So if you're doing the math, then that leaves an extra 50%. So in this particular energy, broad energy balance problem, we're saying maybe 50% of the energy coming from the sun actually reaches the Earth's surface and interacts with the particles, the molecules, the atoms on the Earth's surface. And so, um, as you might imagine, you know, as the energy from the sun hits the Earth's surface, it heats up the Earth's surface. Okay, and so that is captured by the Earth's surface, about 